Hello, I'm Julie Surratt, and this is Dharma Talk Tuesday, and I'm so happy to see you here today, and I'm so happy to see the sun out in San Diego today. So I'm talking to you today about something that should make you feel really good about yourself, <laughs> and I'm going to go into more details here in a moment, but basically... Um, what you need to know first and foremost is that like many entrepreneurs, I do events and at events we make offers and the offers are typically for high ticket items. This is nothing new and you may even may be an entrepreneur who does this. So um, what you, and if you're not, that's okay because this is still relevant for you because chances are if you're watching this, you are someone who desires to manifest more money, raise your energy set points so that you can manifest more money, and also learn the strategies on how to enroll um, high ticket clients or even just uh, like enroll your boss into giving you a raise, like all of these things. All of these things are relevant. So um, what you need to know is that I uh, love enrollment. I love making offers. I love doing events. I've been doing it for a long time and I, I'm just like, I'm, I just enjoy it. I really enjoy it. Um, I have not always been good at it. And I remember for my first like six events, I got really, really nervous and I really, really, really practiced and practiced and practiced when it came to the offer, when it came to my offer story, and when it came to just really doing it right. And I want you to think for a moment about yourself, like how often do you like maybe even stop yourself from uh, moving forward with something and doing something because you really just want to do it right. Maybe you don't do it at all. Maybe you procrastinate to the point where you actually just don't do it because you really want to make sure you're doing it right. But then if you think about it, and you think about that procrastination and not taking action on the thing because you want to make sure you're doing it right so you end up not doing it all it ends up costing you a lot of money it just there's a huge cost to it and so what i want to inspire you with today is the fact that um uh, even though I'm re I've been doing this for a long time, even though I'm really good at making offers, even though I'm really good at like enrollment and presenting and events and stuff like this, there was an event I had where I totally blew the offer. My energy was off. My words were off. Straight up, I did a really bad job <laughs> on the offer. I'm just being honest with you because that's, you know, like how like you get to learn from my mistakes. And it wasn't even so much a mistake. I, I messed up on the offer and I still generated $100,000 from that offer. I still generated six figures in a day from that offer at an event, even though I totally messed up. So how does that happen? And I really wanna land this for you today. I wanna to let you understand, help you understand what I did to still create that result, even though I totally screwed up the offer and how that applies to you and how that applies to you, whatever your business model or whatever your ambition is right now. Um, and just think about that for a second. Like, what is your vision? What is your business model? What is the revenue that you're trying to make this year? What's your goal? And, and <clears throat> type that in the comments. Just share your vision. Share what you're up to. You know, one of these things about Dharma Talk Tuesday is that we're, we're here in a community, especially like those of you who come every single week, my loyalists, my regular people. You're like a community all in yourself. And I can't tell you how many times my community has turned let to look left and look right and hire each other so it's actually really smart for you to sort of like use this platform to advertise yourself so comment here with what you do what your vision is and what your offerings are so think for a minute you know i was i was, I was actually speaking with a friend the other day and she was like oh i feel like my prayers aren't working and i was like well i'm not getting off the phone with you now with a statement like that what makes you say that like that's kind of a dangerous thing to believe, to believe that your prayers aren't working. I was like, why do you say that? And she said, well, I've been praying for prosperity for months and months. And I've been, you know, trusting God and making decisions to, you know, fly to San Diego for various things. And, um, you know, based on these like, like prayers, but then also God saying, yes, go. And she was like, I've been impulsive and these prayers just aren't getting answered. And I was like, well, are you meeting God halfway? And she's like, what do you mean? And I was like, are you making offers? Are you like giving, pe are, are you giving people an opportunity to buy? Are you presenting them with some kind of offering that, that, that allows them to say, yes, I want that? And she said, no. And I said, well, why not? And at the end of the day, I think a lot of people don't because there's this fear of rejection or fear of doing it wrong or fear of looking bad or fear of humiliation from doing it wrong or whatever. 
And so if you're having that, if you have any of that, I just want to like, my intention in today's Dharma Talk Tuesday is to totally nip that in the bud because you, I want you to know that you can actually do it and you can totally screw up and you can still have a huge result. That's what I really want you to get today. Okay, so here's what happened. I did an event and my energy was totally off. I stuffed my face with pizza the night before, which was a horrible idea. I was just really hungry, <laughs> just being honest. And by the time the offer came around the next day, my brain was foggy. I was also like kind of hungry because I didn't really eat that morning. And um, uh, my hormones were off. I mean, there are all these like circumstantial things, but it kind of created the perfect storm <clears throat> of my offer really not being good to the point where I was standing there like communicating the offer and as I'm communicating it, I'm like, this is not good. Like I knew, I knew it wasn't good. So you can imagine my surprise when by the end of the day, I counted up the, um, the contracts that people had turned in and I was like, oh my gosh, like this shitty offer just brought in six figures. How does that happen? Here's what I want you to really get today. You can have bad strategy. You can be bad at enrollment, bad at communication, bad at offers, bad at copywriting. You can, you can literally blow at it. You can totally screw up and you can still create amazing results when your energy is in alignment. So when your energy is in alignment, it doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't even matter how you say it. Because when you've done the blueprint, when you've done the work to blueprint the energy such that there's no other possibility other than the result of success as you see it, then that's what's going to happen. I know this sounds crazy, but here's what happened. Leading up to that event where I did the bad offer, every single day, I was doing a technique that I teach and that I do, obviously, called emotional cultivation. And what emotional cultivation is, is essentially speaking the language of the universe every single day specific to the thing that you intend to create, that you desire to create. So obviously I knew had this, I knew I had this event coming up. So every day for the months leading up to it, every single day, even if it was only like for five minutes, I would sit and I would do my emotional cultivation work, which means exactly what it sounds like, cultivating the emotions of what I knew it felt like to have the result that I wanted, which was actually not even six figures. I didn't even expect that. I wasn't even cultivating for that. That's what ended up happening, but I wasn't even cultivating for that. I was cultivating for a little over half of that actually. And I saw it as if it were done. You know, one of the things that it says in the book of Time, Thomas, which has actually been removed from the Bible and there's a whole controversy on that, but one of the instructions from Jesus is to, um, and it's obviously been translated into English, so I'm not sure what the actual literal Greek says, but in the English translated version, it says, surround yourself with the energy of your desire as if it is done. It actually says to do this in the book of Thomas, which was removed from the Bible. So it's interesting because in the Bible it says, ask and you shall receive, but it doesn't go into the detail. The detail is actually in the book of Thomas where it says, surround yourself with the feeling of the desire accomplished. And so that's exactly what you do with emotional cultivation. So, um, you know, I was on the phone today actually with someone who was talking about a new business model she's doing. It's a really amazing membership site thing. And she was talking about the different strategies. And after, I don't know, like 25 minutes of talking or something like that, and she was talking about the coaching she'd received and some things she'd looked up, other similar business models and things she's intending on doing. And I was like, that all sounds amazing. Uh, and in the last 25 minutes we've been talking, I've never heard you, I haven't heard you once say anything about the energetic work that you're doing to um, like blueprint this vision into the reality. And this is where you see people burning out. 
just as another example, I received a newsletter from um, one of my peers today and she was talking about this concept of burnout and how it's so real. In fact, I even saw something in the news about how doctors are now prescribing burnout as a real medical thing that people are having. And it's, it's like getting in the way of their productivity and their health and all of that. So one of the reasons why people have burnout is because they're doing like 100% of the doing and 0% of the energetic blueprinting. Their manifesting is totally off. You can really only do, do, do so much and then you do burn out. But when you are doing and um, like blueprinting the energy with your intention, using something like emotional cultivation, and then you go do the doing, which in my book is only 33% of the entire formula for results, you don't burn out, I'm telling you. I've actually had like, a, this has been a really big push year. You know, we've already generated multiple six figures in my company and we're only halfway into the year, less than halfway into the year. And um, so I've been working hard just because that's part of my intention this year. It's what I, what I want. And I don't feel burnt out at all. I'm super energized. I can't wait to, you know, wake up and like sit at my table over here and do the thing. I'm excited about it. I think about my audience all the time and I'm like, oh, that would be so good for them. That'd be such a good newsletter. You know, it's like, I'm really engaged. I'm not burnt out. I'm not tired. I'm not over it. I'm not like jaded. I'm not any of those things. I'm actually really excited about my audience and my clients and my mission and about everything to do with work. Everything, 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 the, the workshops, the retreats, like all the things that we're up to because I, I'm not just trying to do it all myself. I'm actually blue, blueprinting the universe and God to surround me with the energy and the required alignment to create the result. And so like, I don't need to feel pressure about enrollment calls. I don't need to feel pressure about offers. <laughs> I don't need to feel pressure about writing email copy in a certain way. I don't need to feel pressure about anything because I know that I can fuck up and I still will get an amazing result because it's not about me doing. It's not about me doing it right. It's not about me doing it perfect. It's not about any of that. It's ultimately, if I can just be in that relationship with God and with the universe every single day, even for just five minutes or longer, if I have longer, then all I gotta do is show up and do the best I can, sometimes the best that you can, feels and looks like not that great, sort of like what I was just saying at what happened at my event, and you'll still get a great result. And at that point, it's like, are, are, you, are you willing to look foolish? I don't think anyone at that particular event actually, like, especially a lot of those people had never seen me present before, so they had nothing to compare it to. I'm sure they didn't actually sit there and say, wow, this is a shitty offer. Like, I'm sure nobody actually felt that other than me. But to me, I felt foolish. I felt a little bit foolish. Like, mm, I know I can do better than this. Like, there's like a feeling of foolishness in that. But one of the things that one of my favorite authors, Mark Batterson, says is faith is being willing to look foolish. So, like, if you are doing God's work, if you're a light worker, and if you have a big mission in the world and a big desire for impact, and you're ready to make a lot of money and make it fast from your mission, from your vision, you have to be willing to look foolish. And you don't have a fear of looking foolish ever when you know that you're in co-creation, when you're pacing with God, when you're co-creating with the divine. And that's, what, that's one of the reasons why you can totally screw up, you can do it wrong and still have an amazing result. So I want you to hear that and I want you to think to yourself what that would feel like for you and how freeing that really feels. I mean, for me, like I said, it's one of the reasons why I don't get burnt out. Like I don't feel tired. I don't feel any of that because I don't feel a sense of pressure. I'm so spacious in my mind and in my energy. And there's truly such a sense of not only freedom, but also playfulness in my business because I have the space to do my events and not feel like, oh shit, like I spent $20,000 on an event. Like it has to work now. Like I don't feel those things, which is so nice for my relationship, which is so nice for like the health of my body, which is so nice for just like my day-to-day -day life experience. I just think life is too short to go through worrying all the time. So what would it feel like for you to just take that worry off the table and to know that your manifesting is working that your strategy may not be perfect, but it's working based on the manifesting work that you are doing, the energetic alignment that you are setting. Comment below with what that would feel like for you. Would that not feel 
totally empowering, totally freeing. I mean, if you're not taking the time in your day stressing and putting pressure on yourself, what relationships does that, does that create space for in your life, first of all? Secondly, um, <clears throat> how many more offers would that allow you to make so that you're not actually procrastinating, so you're not leaving money on the table, so you're not like my friends developing beliefs about, I don't think my prayers are working. Like, no, 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 no. No, you get to make more offers. You get to be in more enrollment conversations. You get to do more Facebook Lives, workshops, whatever it is, so that you're actually reaching your people. You're creating what I call an avenue of abundance so that the universe, so that God has a road to which drive your the truck of money into your bank account, if that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna check some of the comments here. Hello, Jill, Julie, Stephanie, hi, Laura, hi, Catherine. Laura says, I'm getting better at enrolling people. So good to hear, you get to, Laura, you're so amazing. Offer story, working on that. Hi, Michelle. Catherine says, love your honesty, always, always, always. Hi, Zen, so good to see you. All right. So if you're watching on the replay, of course, do a little, drop me a little hashtag replay and um, you're always welcome to obviously comment and engage because even if you're still on the replay, I always, you know, go back and check the comments and all of that. So at the end of the day, my intention and hope for this Facebook Live is that it inspires you. And if there's something you're stalling out on and you're something that you're putting pressure on yourself on that's exhausting you, that's causing you stress, that's causing you to feel not enoughness or... Um, uh, like, like a feeling of trapped or any of those things, just take that pressure off right now. And, um, let me just, I'm just trying to think of something I can give you around emotional cultivation. Um, I'm going to drop the link to a couple, what am I going to drop the link to here? I should have thought about this before. This is that thing about being a like excited, passionate, um, entrepreneur who's like jumps into the topic without even thinking about a thing that I can give you. Hi, Cheryl. Hi, Ashley. Kathy. Hello. I'm going to do this. I'm going to surprise you. <laughs> I'm going to give you a surprise little something so you can come back and check to see what link I drop here for a free little something for you to check out as it relates to not only emotional cultivation, but also yoga. And the reason why yoga is important is because it's sort of like, you know, you don't build a, si a skyscraper without the foundation because otherwise the building might fall. So it's, you, I mean, you can, but you really don't want to do emotional cultivation without your yoga practice first, because the yoga practice builds the foundation for your emotional cultivation to work and to be even stronger than it would otherwise be. So um, I'm gonna drop you a link that is either related to emotional cultivation or yoga or both. Surprise, surprise, we'll see what fun little goodies I have for you here. Laura says, having tornadoes, oh my goodness, here, so friends called in to report. We'll have to go back for the replay. Uh, bless you, Laura, surrounding you in, um, <laughs> surprise for later, uh, surrounding you in all kinds of protection and safety. Hi, Margo. Hi, Michelle. Okay. All right. So that's really it. I just really want you to see from like a real, totally transparent entrepreneur's perspective that you can create incredible results and still do it totally wrong. You can do it totally wrong and still create incredible results. So never let the procrastination, I'm not good enough, I'm not prepared enough conversation hold you back. And one of the ways to make sure that you are um, able to have that kind of faith and confidence in your strategy is by making sure your emotional cultivation practice is really solid. Okay, so that's it. I am sending you blessings for today's Dharma Talk Tuesday. If you know anyone who this would make a difference for, of course, please share with them. Hit the share button and tag them below. And I will see you next week right here in the Dharma Talk Tuesday chair at 6 o'clock Pacific. Sending you so many blessings for the week.